Running Docker in a Proxbox LXC is one of the best ways to reduce resource overhead and get the best performance. But doing so is a bit tricky. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do it. What's up Geek Army, Anand here. In my last video, I gave you a tour of my mini lab or mini home lab and Proxmox virtual environment was a core component of my setup. I run my home server, media server, home assistant, AdGuard home, bunch of different things on my Proxmox server. But many of you wanted to know how I run my Docker based home server and media server in a Proxmox unprivileged LXC. The response I got from my previous video was amazing. I'm hoping that just like my previous video, you will hit the like button for this one. And more importantly, more than 93% of the people who watched my previous video were not subscribers. Let's change that. This would be a good opportunity to hit the subscribe button so you get notified of future videos. First, let's start with a little bit of background. In my article comparing Proxmox to VMware's ESXi, I picked Proxmox. Most of the home labbers are gravitating towards Proxmox. With the recent announcement from VMware that the free ESXi is going away, I predict that more and more home labbers will gravitate towards Proxmox. One of the biggest advantages of a hypervisor like Proxmox is the ability to run multiple virtual systems isolated from each other and from the Proxmox host or a or the host system. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on this topic, so let's take an example from Ubuntu's documentation. Here you have a picture of or a schematic of a virtual machine and system containers or Linux containers or LXC. In a virtual machine, you have the host kernel and you have the hypervisor and then you have a full-fledged operating system on top with its own kernel. This adds overhead. This also provides real good isolation, but it does add overhead. In a Linux container, on the other hand, you have a shared kernel between a container and the host. This reduces the overhead significantly while still offering some level of isolation. Which brings us to the next part. Proxmox LXC can be privileged or, or, or unprivileged. In a privileged Proxmox LXC, if the attacker gets control of the LXC, then they can theoretically get into your host operating system and take control of it too. This is the main reason why I really like to run all of my containers in unprivileged more. In fact, I do not have any privileged containers on my Proxmox. But installing Docker in an unprivileged Proxmox LXC is a bit tricky. Let's see how to do that. At this point, I'm going to assume that you already have Proxmox running. If not, let me know in the comment section and I will consider making a video on how I install my Proxmox server. But for now, let's assume that you have Proxmox. Let's head over to my Proxmox right here. We're gonna create a new container, but before that, we will have to download the template. And this usually goes where you normally store your ISOs and container templates. In my case, it goes into the SSD. So I'm gonna head over to container templates. Right here, you can already see that I have two templates downloaded, Debian and Ubuntu 22.04. How do you download those? You just hit the templates on top and search for what you want. In this case, it is Ubuntu. So I'm gonna hit the long term support edition, which is 22.04 right now. In about a month, the next version of the LTS release will come out 24.04. But at this point, this is the most recent long-term release. So we're gonna select that and hit download. And within a few seconds, you should have it downloaded. Now using this, we're gonna create a new container. How do we do that? Right here, create container. So we're gonna hit create containers. We're gonna pick uh, the node name is PBE. We're gonna leave it as this. We'll pick a random number for this container and for host let's call it udms which goes along with my docker and traffic guides ultimate docker media server so we'll we'll pick that it is going to be an unprivileged container so we'll keep that checked nesting this is this is important so once again let's switch over to this picture again okay so docker is a containerization engine when you install it in an operating system you have the os and then docker on top but LXC is a container in itself, Linux container, LXC. So when you take a container and you install another Docker 
containerization engine, you have container on container, and this is nesting. Therefore, we will have to enable nesting here. And then for password, this is the password for the root user. We'll pick something. This is not a strong password. I recommend you to pick something long and strong. Even better would be to use your own SSH keys, which would be the best form of security. So let's pick that and let's head over to the next tab. For template, we have it stored in the SSD storage. So we're going to pick SSD and we're going to pick the container that we just kind of downloaded or the template we just downloaded. So it next. For disks, this entirely depends on your situation. In my case, I have two terabyte hard drive for Proxmox and I have a four terabyte hard drive for storage. If you're really interested in what type of hardware I have in my Proxmox server, I'll put the links in the description below. Those are affiliate links. Your prices won't change, but I get a small commission. So I would really appreciate it if you plan to make a purchase to use my affiliate links. Okay, back again. So. In this case, I have two terabytes. I'm going to pick 64 gigabytes just because I want to remind my environment. I have the home server, which is self-contained. All the media is stored in a NAS. The home server pulls this media stuff from my NAS and sends it to the client. So I don't need a lot of space. If your situation is different, I would bump up this number to whatever you feel comfortable. If you also have a huge Plex library, for example, the metadata, can grow a lot. In this case, I would probably go higher than 64, but for my purposes, 64 is more than enough. So let's just pick 64, at least for this test. Another thing I like to do is pick enable no access time, which reduces wear and tear on the hard drives or SSDs. Then I'm going to also enable ACLs, which would allow us to set some advanced permissions. Hit next. Then we're going to set the number of cores. This again depends on your host. In my case, I have 16 CPUs. I'm gonna pick, I'm not gonna allocate all of it. In fact, for my media server and home server, I only have 12 cores allocated of the 16. In this case, it's a test. I'm going to allocate, let's say four, and let's keep going. And then memory, again, the same deal. On my host, I have 64 gigabytes. In my home server and media server containers, I have 24 gigabytes allocated. In this case, let's just go with eight gigabytes. It's always a good idea to have swap. So let's just go four gigabytes of swap memory. Then let's keep moving. The next step is to set a static IP address or IP address. But I always recommend setting a static IP. This way, the IP address of your home server or media server never changes. And you always know what IP to use to reach your home server. Okay, to set the IP address, static IP address, you will have to pick an IP address that is not available in your network. So open your router page, look, look through the list of IP addresses for various clients, pick something that is available. So in my case, I'm gonna pick something random. It has to be of the format as shown in the screen slash 24, which covers the entire network of 192.168.1. Then we're getting into networking. So we'll just leave it at that. My gateway IP is usually the IP address of the internet gateway or the router. So 192.168.1.1. Everything else remains as is. We'll keep moving. For DNS, we're not gonna set anything right now, so we'll just pick the defaults and keep moving. And I want to start it after creation, so we're gonna check that box. And in a few seconds, my container should be ready. There you go, it's done. Now, before I go to my container, I would just show you quickly the, uh, the, the resources I use in my home server. For example, here you go. As I said, 24 gigabytes for memory, for memory four gigabytes for swap, 12 cores, and then I have a few different mount points that are set there. Don't worry about all of that stuff. You shouldn't have anything. In fact, you will have only this one right here. I am sharing some of the folders from my host system and making them available inside the container for a few other uh, purposes. We won't get into that right now, at least. Okay, so let's head over to the container we just created. It already started. It's ready to go. Let, here you can see the, the settings that we picked. Let's go over to console and try to log in root. And there you go. We're in. 
Now, it's not a good idea to continue as root. So the first step we're going to do is create a generic user. How do we do that? I would refer you to my guide, uh, which is the first part of the ultimate Docker series, which covers preparing the operating system. And if you scroll down, you're going to see some of the steps I normally like to do before I get started. So, and we're going to do the first one right here, create a new user. So let's head over to this tab again, and we're going to create a new user, add user on it. Notice that I'm not using sudo here because I'm already logged in as root and a password for it, password for it. Let's just keep going and I'm going to say yes. So the user is created. The next thing I want to do is add this user to the sudo group. So when needed, I can use the sudo command to elevate my privileges. We're going to use the add user command again, user anand. And in this case, we're going to provide the group name sudo. So now this should add me to the sudo group. I'm done. Let's test it out. So I'm going to exit and I'm going to log in as myself. And there you go. I am in. So everything works so far. Let's head over to the guide one more time to see what the next step is. The next step is to update the operating system. How do we do that? Using these two commands right here. So going back to Proxmox, sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. I'm using a semicolon to separate the commands. This is a shorter way to issue multiple commands in one line. So let's do that. Password. Now, this is going to update all the packages and pull in any updates that need to be installed. So let's let it run and come back when it's done. It looks like I have about 56 megabytes to pull and install. Okay, the update is done. If you're still watching this video, then there is obviously something here that you like. So hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you get notified of all future videos. Okay, the next step, let's head over to my guide one more time. We're going to make some security changes here. First is to change the default port of SSH, which is 2022. Everybody knows SSH port is 2022. And so it, it's an easy attack point for the attacker. So we're going to, uh, it's not a full security, but it makes it a little bit difficult for attackers to get into your system if they can't guess the port number that you are in. So we're going to sudo nano etc slash ss h slash sh d dot com the only thing we're gonna do here is scroll down right here and change the port to 2053 okay there are a few more things that you can change here in fact i normally do change some of these things here for example disallowing root login using a password that's a good security measure to have but it's outside the scope of this video so we're gonna skip for now we're just gonna change the port number so well, let's save this by pressing Control X, Y, and Enter. So we're done with this change. Now we do have to restart SSH to, for this to uh, take effect. So let's copy this and let's go over here, paste, and enter. That's it. We're done with the next step. So moving on, then we're going to install some packages that I normally like to install. What these packages are? I will explain while it's installing. So I'm going to paste this right there. Curl or is something that is used by many applications. So we're going to install that. We're going to install zip, unzip. We're also going to install network time protocol. We're going to install htop, which is a really nice utility to monitor the resource usage on your system. Then I also like to install network tools. Also, finally, ncdu, which is an awesome tool to to look at the space usage in your system. So let's hit enter and let the system pull all the packages that are needed and install them. We'll come back when it's done. Okay, we've installed all the packages that are needed. So let's head over and see what is the next step that we need to do. I normally like to, to make some minor tweaks to the con system configuration so it runs better. Now, there might be people that would argue against this, but but for home lab environment, I try to reduce the number of writes made to the system because it's unnecessary writes. So I put these things in my sysctl.conf to reduce the number of amount of writes. So nano or sudo nano slash etc slash sysctl.conf. 
and I'm going to go all the way to the end and paste those right there. Save it and exit. That's it. Now, when you restart, these things should take effect. There is a way to to uh, do implement it right now, but I'm not going to do that. The last thing I want to do is enable firewall. By default, Ubuntu does not have firewall enabled. We're going to do that right now and add some rules to, to make it work. Okay, how do we enable the firewall? Before we enable the firewall, we're going to add some default rules. The first one is we're going to deny all incoming connections. So let's copy paste that command sudo d um, u of w default deny incoming the same way we're gonna allow all outgoing so we're let's copy that and paste it right there oh by the way if you don't know where to find this guide i'll put the link in the description below so you have it the final thing that we're gonna add is that we're gonna allow all incoming connections from the local network so this way, all your network devices have access to your home server. Now, people who have multiple VLANs and all of that stuff for security purposes, obviously, may, may be against something like this, but it's, it's a matter of personal preference and also how you have your environment set up. Also, people who have multiple VLANs already understand the networking concept, so they, I am sure you can figure out a way to implement what you want to implement. So that is done. And that is about it. So we do have to enable the firewall, which we didn't. So sudo u of w enable. Now, if you notice one thing, we did set the port number for SSH to 2053. Now, if I do sudo u of w status numbered, I think that's the command. I only have one, which is all the incoming connections from my local network which is fine, I can SSH from my local network, right? So this is good. So 2053 is already covered here. If for any reason you want to expose your SSH port to the internet, which I do not recommend doing, instead look at a solution like Guacamole or something that would help you reach the servers that you want in a more secure way. If you want to do that, you will have to add 2053 to the allowed list of ports. But for now, we're not gonna do any of that. Let's head over to my guide. So we've completed every step that is needed to set up the operating system. At this point, you can decide to do what you want to do. If I scroll back to the top of this guide, you can follow guide number two right here, setting up Docker and Docker apps and keep moving from there. Alternatively, if you prefer an automated way to do this, take a look at auto traffic. I developed auto traffic with years of experience. It automates setting up Docker containers, reverse proxies. You can even pull SSL certificates. So, and all your services will be available through fully qualified domain names. You can even set up an authentication layer like Authelia, which would give you multi-factor authentication. So if you decide to try it out, it would su support my work. So it's this is available for you if you're interested but in this guide we're going to do it the old school way we're going to install docker manually so let's head over to my proxbox right here and how do we install docker for this we're going to head over to, to docker's documentation so here i am on the documentation for installing docker engine on ubuntu so if i scroll all the way down there are several steps listed here that you're welcome to go through one at a time manually but Docker also gives you a convenience script that makes it really simple to install Docker in any environment. So let's, we're gonna use the convenience script here. So right here is the command. We're gonna copy this command right here. Head over here, paste it. And this is gonna download the install script. Let's check. Yes, it is installed. We do have to make it executable. So we're gonna do sudo chmod plus x get docker and that's it now what do we have to do next let's head over we have to run the script obviously i'm going to skip the dry run part right here because it's i've tested it i know it works so we're just copy we're going to copy the first part of the command put it right here and let's let it run this is going to go through a bunch of different steps pull the right docker image and have it installed on your system Let's wait for it to continue and then come back when it's done. 
okay, it's done. It, it just took a few seconds, but notice that there is something here. I just want to bring your attention to this Docker Compose plugin. The Docker Compose is now automatically installed when you install Docker. This wasn't the case previously. You So uh, the Compose is now a plugin and you could use it you don't need to go through extra steps to install Docker Compose. That's it. We went through setting up an LXC container, unprivileged LXC container, and installing Docker on it. At this point, you're ready to get started on your Docker journey. Follow one of my many guides to install Docker uh, or Docker apps, and then move on to traffic, and then set up your Artelia. The, the, it's an ocean from here on out. If you really like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And what would also really help me is if you check out some of the subscription options I have on my website. I have many different levels that give you several different privileges. So check it out, subscribe. If you do it, it would really help me out. Thank you for watching. Go Geek Army.